Hey there, couriers. Kato Genesis here with a special Kato's Countdowns, going over the most powerful of my personal favorites, the unarmed and punchy weapons of Fallout New Vegas. Criteria for this countdown will be like many of the others previous, ranking these items by base damage. And because of me being a creator of no nonsense guides, you can expect that I will show you the locations on where to find them as well. Before we dive in though, something I would like to mention is that melee weapons have a lot of their own VATS attacks that are unique to those weapons, while the unarmed weapons have a set of universal VATS attacks. The stomp, which does double damage to targets that are knocked down, and the uppercut, which does more damage for less AP, both unlock at 50 unarmed skill, and the cross attack, which deals two and a half times damage to limbs, unlocks at 75 skill. Each of these special VATS attacks costs 20 AP for every unarmed weapon. That means, once you hit 50 unarmed skill or higher, there's no need to use the basic VATS attack anymore. Except for with one entry on this list, but I won't spoil the surprise. So here we go, Wastrels. These are the 10 most power-punching, fist-flailing, face-rearranging, unarmed-type weapons in Fallout New Vegas. This Fallout game is the most generous when it comes to unarmed-type weapons especially with unique variants. And we start with the Paladin Toaster, the unique Zap Glove. Its base damage from the original Zap Glove has gone from 35 to 41. The bonus they both share is the EMP damage that comes along with the Zap Glove, which is 50 bonus damage to robots and 20 bonus damage to those in power armor. The Paladin Toaster has a little bit less durability too, but an upgrade is still an upgrade. Nothing's too notable about its crit damage and crit percentage. Its crit damage is 41, doubling the output, as normally crits do, and its critical chance multiplier is times one. So you won't get any crit bonus from the Paladin Toaster itself. Even though this shocking gauntlet has an energy cell embedded into it, that was just an addition to New Vegas that didn't come to fruition, which was going to involve some of these weapons needing ammo. But coming out as insanely cheap to operate as a result, unarmed users can only benefit from it. So now, onto the location of the Paladin Toaster. Just southeast of Black Mountain and northwest of Helios 1 is Black Rock Cave. Inside of this cave is a simple layout and you're looking for the corpse of a dead prospector. And on their body is the unique zap glove, the Paladin Toaster. Be wary that there are nightkin prowling in this cave though, also. A unique variant of a pretty rare weapon already is the Embrace of the Mantis King, added in the Gunrunner's Arsenal DLC. It is a unique Mantis gauntlet, and is visually much more striking, or spiking, thanks to the amount of vicious looking spikes all over this piece of chitin turned weapon, while the original Mantis gauntlet was more of a smooth plate just strapped to the arm. The Embrace of the Mantis King's base damage is 42, and comes with extra effects bonus critical damage, and bonus critical chance. These are both notable because normally a weapon's crit damage is just double of what its base damage is. You can use the Paladin Toaster as an example here. And while the Embrace of the Mantis King's base damage is 42, its crit damage is 64, meaning criticals outside of VATS will be hitting for over 100 damage. Inside of VATS it will be even more. And its critical chance multiplier is times Three. So if you have invested in crit, you will embrace a ton of critical hits too. Despite the rarity of Mantis Gauntlets in general until Honest Hearts, thankfully the Embrace of the Mantis King being a unique has a guaranteed location too. So if you make your way to Freeside on the north end of New Vegas and stop by Mick and Ralph's little shop, Mick will be the one that has this for sale, provided you have the Gunrunner's Arsenal DLC. And if Mick had a violent accident, I'm not pointing any fingers, the Vendortron at Gunrunner's might have it instead. There are numerous variants of the Power Fist, and a few made it to this countdown, but we're starting with Salt Upon Wounds Power Fist from the Honest Hearts add-on. There are two numbers that come off of Salt Upon Wounds Power Fist when you strike something with it. The first is its base damage of 45, modified by whatever you have to add on to it, and ticks of poison as well. Three damage per second over 10 seconds. If you are striking fast enough, the poison will stack. And since it is a theme with this weapon, what I would recommend is stacking it with the poisons you can craft at a campfire. Something like Bleak Venom being one of the easiest to make, which hits for an extra 15 hit points per second for 10 seconds. To make that, you'll need a survival skill of 50 in a campfire or an electric hot plate, three bark scorpion glands, one cazador poison gland, and one white horse nettle. The design choice for Salt Upon Wounds Power Fist can be enjoyed as well, with a tribal paint scheme, feathers strapped to the sides, and the part that makes the most sense, salt 
salt and a couple of jagged pieces of metal strapped to the front. Even though it does deal poison damage, it is implied that salting the wounds has a long-term damaging effect. There's no extra critical bonuses that come along with Salt Upon Wounds Power Fist, but it is still decent for one of the Power Fist type Power Fisty weapons on this countdown. So now, where to find it? This is wielded by the Chief of the White Legs in Honest Hearts. Salt Upon Wounds. Bet you didn't see that coming. Supposedly there is a way to get it from his body, but regardless, like a lot of the unique gear in Honest Hearts, you can simply get to the end of the DLC, and once you reach the Southern Passage, there will be a chest in front of it upon completion of the story in Zion Canyon, containing many items, including Salt Upon Wounds Power Fist. Next is not a unique, but powerful nonetheless, the Displacer Glove. Its base damage is 50, critical damage is the same, and critical multiplier is times one. On the knuckles of the Displacer Glove is a speaker, which implies a different damage type, but there is no sonic damage type. Still technically normal damage. The fun part about Displacer Glove variants is the Gauss Rifle-like effect when something is struck and killed with it, launching their body far into the distance, raising the entertainment stat by a good chunk. Because the Displacer Glove is not a unique, you can find it in multiple locations in New Vegas. It can be purchased from Quartermaster Barden in Hoover Dam, Mick at Mick and Ralph's, the Great Con Armorer, Blake at the Crimson Caravan Company, and the Vendertron at Gunrunners. Hopefully that's enough options to get yourself one if you're interested. Even though this is kind of modeled like a power fist, it takes on traits of its own. I'm referring to the industrial hand. There's no weapon quite like it. Even visually, this is colored a caution tape yellow and is fitted with a constantly running saw blade on the business end. If you watch my melee weapons countdown of New Vegas, weapons like the rapidly striking ripper were measured in damage by how much damage they would deal in one second of sustained hits. That is not the case with the industrial hand, because if it were, its base damage would be 160. That's its DPS. And during all 3.2 strikes during that one second of sustained hits, each hit has a chance for a critical of 40 damage on top of that. I mean it when I say the industrial hand is in a class of its own. The industrial hand's AP cost in VATS though is 65, rather high, for a unarmed style weapon. The reason for this, I imagine, is because of the sustained hits and the high damage potential of the industrial hand. The reason I mentioned the VATS cost this time, because it doesn't usually matter with the other ones if you have a skill of 50 or higher, is because power attacks don't work with the industrial hand, and special VATS moves don't either, which instead kind of just glitch out your VATS sequence and giving enemies free hits on you at the same time. So if you use the industrial hand in VATS, make sure you're using its standard attack, not the uppercuts and crosses. Did I mention this thing also ignores armor? I should sound more exclamatory for that. This thing ignores armor also. I think enough selling points have been stated for the industrial hand. It's incredible and in my personal top three, but this list has its own rules and I intend to follow them. I've talked it up enough though. There's multiple locations to find the industrial hand in the divide. This is in the Lonesome Road expansion for New Vegas. The soonest and what I consider to be easiest way to find your industrial hand is getting to basically the halfway mark of the divide at the Ashton silo entrance. This is the firing a nuke on accident sequence. So you'll know it when you get there. If you turn around from the terminal, you accidentally press the big red button on, there will be a footlocker on a set of shelves. Inside that footlocker should be your industrial hand. The Fist of Rar, the only Deathclaw gauntlet you can get in New Vegas without modding. This beastly claw also has a base damage of 50, and unlike our last entry, is able to use special moves. Three bonus effects come with the Fist of Rar as well. Bonus critical chance, bonus critical damage, and bonus limb damage. That translates to a critical damage of 75 instead of just another flat 50, a critical chance multiplier of times two, and from what I can tell, double damage to limbs. So if you combine that bonus limb damage with the bonus limb damage of the cross attack, you're doing 4.5 times damage to enemy limbs. Pretty much, this is pretty much anything you would expect from a King Deathclaw. There was a discussion on the wiki about whether or not the Fist of Rar actually does pass through armor, and the resulting end of that conversation was that it does not, and I have yet to find anything that proves that it does, so we'll just assume that despite Deathclaws being able to do it when swung, the Fist of Rar does not ignore armor. Now for where to find it, the Fist of Rar, or 
Fist of the Northrar, if you have Wild Wasteland, is a craftable weapon. So you will need to kill a particular enemy and craft it afterwards. The enemy you're looking for is Rar, a named Deathclaw in the Divide, the sandblasted ruins you explore in Lonesome Road. The entrance of Rar's cave is not far from Ulysses Temple, so once you start getting towards that location, just look for a large broken pipe that's leaking a lot of water, and Rar's cave should be just beyond it. Defeating Rar will give you Rar's Talon. From here you can take the claw to Workbench and, with an unarmed skill of 75, create the Fist of Rar. A little fun addition is that Rar's Talon is a quest item until it's used to make the weapon. So any quests or DLCs that remove all of your gear, you will still have Rar's Talon in your inventory to craft the Fist of Rar later. So technically, you can give the ghost people in the Sierra Madre a taste of Deathclaw Gauntlet if you don't craft it until you go there. Another Power Fist variant you're going to want to look out for, and the final pneumatic style Power Fist on this countdown, is the Saturnite Fist Superheated. Just superheating your standard Saturnite Power Fist takes its base damage from 35 to a whopping 55, and that's simply just a massive jump. The Saturnite Fist Superheated also does something that other Power Fists do not, and that effect is when scoring a critical hit, the enemy will burst into flames for 2 damage per second for 5 seconds. Unfortunately, the critical multiplier for the Saturnite Superheated Power Fist is times 1, so you'll be relying on your own critical ability, and the critical damage itself just doubles the output. Still, hitting really hard with a chance of igniting your enemy makes this both a devastating Power Fist and a spectacle weapon. Oh, and why you don't have that many options, the fire damage that comes off of the superheated Saturnite Fist is affected by the Pyromaniac perk. So if you have invested in burning your enemies, this is more damage per second on a critical. The generosity of Obsidian in New Vegas with unarmed users didn't really stop in any of the DLCs. There was always something new. So the superheated Saturnite Fist is found in Old World Blues. And the Saturnite Power Fist, in general, is a common weapon that you can find Lobotomites wielding, so getting the original variant isn't that difficult. In order to superheat the Power Fist, though, you will need to upgrade the toaster in the sink, the room you're given, in Big Mountain. On the south side of the Big Mountain Crater between X2 and the artillery testing site is the Cuckoo's Nest, nestled in a hillside cave. In this cave is a toaster shrine, and once you find it, in the middle of the shrine is the holotape that you need to upgrade your toaster to give it both the unceasing urge to burn the world and to upgrade your Saturnite Power Fist to the superheated version. Back to something a bit more vanilla and a bit more familiar is Pushy. This is the unique variant of the Displacer Glove we had earlier on the countdown. Where the Displacer Glove dealt 50 damage, Pushy deals 60. Its critical damage is also 60 and critical multipliers times 1, and I found this to just be a nice middle ground for damage and damage per second, because in the vanilla game its damage per second is actually the highest, but that DPS is beat out later by DLC weapons like the Industrial Hand and the Superheated Saturnite Fist. Even though this countdown is technically objective through base damage, Pushy has always been my personal number one. I just like ragdolling enemies and Pushy makes that easy. So if that's something you like, let's go over where to find it. Ruby Hill Mine, northwest of New Vegas and on the road towards Jacobstown. Fight off the enemies in this cave and towards the back, the cave will open up to a watery cavern. In one of the entrances to this cavern, there will be a dead jackal gang member and you will find Pushy on their body. Gunrunner's arsenal threw punches our way in the form of the two-step goodbye, a unique version of the already rare Ballistic Fist. When you make a reference to the icing on the cake, is at the start of the cake? The icing on the cake is the bonus. The whole thing is icing. The two-step goodbye's base damage is 70. Its critical damage is 10. Its critical chance multiplier is times 4. This is the only punchy weapon in New Vegas that has a critical chance multiplier that high. And the reason for this is no doubt because of its bonus effect, which is called critical kill equals boom. To translate that further, enemies you kill with a critical hit with the two-step goodbye become a timed explosive and detonate shortly after death for 175 damage in an area of effect. Now there are some downsides to this. You'll know that the enemy is primed to explode because it will make the same beeping noise as a mine when you've stepped in proximity of it. This makes the two-step goodbye dangerous dangerous to both the user and the enemies that are left over if the crit kill boom effect does activate. Because unfortunately, explosive perks, including hit the deck, do not work with the two-step goodbyes explosive. This generally makes the two-step goodbye a high risk reward type weapon, but fun all the same. And since I mentioned the Gunrunner's Arsenal, you may have an idea
idea of where to get it at this point, but we're gonna go over it anyway. You can purchase the two-step goodbye from the Gunrunner's Vendortron, basically right outside Freeside's East Gate, but you'll be spending a lot of caps to get it, roughly 20,000. But you should already know at this point that the Gunrunner's Arsenal Uniques aren't cheap to begin with. But yeah, that's where to get the two-step goodbye. Omissions time, and I know there are a lot of honorable mentions, and I'm sure there's going to be comments about high DPS punchy weapons too in the comments, but I wish to go all the way to the bottom of the damage criteria. To mention the golden boxing gloves, the base damage of these is 1, but it also is one of the few weapons that deals fatigue damage. So fatigue is a stat value that's not used very much. Aside from the 100 fatigue damage that flashbangs do, you'll get 50 out of each strike from the golden gloves. Wasteland creatures respective fatigue values are pretty much based on their size. The bigger the enemy, the more punches it's going to take. However, with humanoid types, 5 to 6 hits is the sweet spot, and that's that doesn't take very long. And when an enemy is knocked unconscious, you have the opportunity to use your stomp Vats move since they will be indisposed and intimate with the ground. Reminder that the stomp Vats move requires an unarmed skill of 50 and does 4 times damage. So once an enemy is unconscious on the ground, switching to a fist weapon that actually deals damage and executing one stomp will probably one-shot them. If you ended up missing the Golden Gloves when you were heading through New Vegas, you need not look any further than the iconic Lucky 38. The first time you enter, you will be on the casino floor, and taking a left from the entrance, you can head up to the VIP lounge, where there is a bar, as expected, and a bookshelf that holds the Golden Boxing Gloves. Now for the final entry of the highest base damage, pugilist type fisty weapon in Fallout New Vegas, we have the Ballistic Fist. This is one that a lot of users swear by, for many good reasons. This is a wrist mounted shotgun, gunshot and all when you strike an enemy, no 12 or 20 gauge required. But the Ballistic Fist is also a mid to late game weapon. The base damage of the Ballistic Fist is 80. That is so absurdly high for base damage. Its critical damage is the same, so hitting with a critical deals 160 damage. Thankfully, it's not too absurd because the critical chance multiplier is still times one. A point blank shotgun blast is many levels of satisfying, as you may have already learned with the Ballistic Fist Unique variant, the two step goodbye. This one costs way less to purchase from a vendor at around 7,800 caps, comes with that extra 10 base damage, and with this one, you don't have to file insurance paperwork for damage sustained from explosions because the whole blast from the Ballistic Fist is guaranteed to go into your foe. Does anything else need to be said besides point blank shotgun fist? Maybe the location of where to find them. So let's move on to that. Supposedly Blake can carry these at the Crimson Caravan Company, but I don't recall seeing them myself. Where I did recall seeing them though is the Hidden Valley Bunker by Quartermaster Torres of the Brotherhood of Steel. And Mick of Mick and Ralph's if you pass a speech check with him to access his special inventory. If you're looking for ballistic fists out in the wild though that you can just pick up, you will find them wielded by Legion Praetorians most of which are protecting Kaisar in his main tent at the fort. So that's the most powerful punchy weapons you can find in Fallout New Vegas. When it comes to base damage, even though the industrial hand's a little bit of a weird one, if you think something belonged on this list or deserved to be mentioned, I'm sure you'll tell me in the comments, so please do. But also see if you can tell us location as well, because other players might want to get it too. I love doing this for you guys. I love talking about New Vegas, I love geeking out about Fallout, and now I'm able to do it full time, provided YouTube doesn't collapse. So in a way to help guarantee that I stay full time, the Patreon is a way to help support that. And if you decide to, you get to be immortalized in the credits like these awesome people and Wasteland Legends Sven. But there's other perks too that you will only see on the Patreon, like my face in the monthly updates, and b-rolls and highlights and stuff. So please check out the Patreon if you have a minute. If you enjoyed this countdown and or found it useful, please do whatever you see fit to show that. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Kato Genesis, and may you wander the wasteland like you own it.